This conference will now be recorded. There you go. So be careful what you say. You're now on recording. <laughs> Um, so I didn't send an agenda today. Today's more just to check in, see how you guys are doing. So I'm not going to mute you. Um, how is everybody? How are you uh, holding up? Good. Okay. Good? So, so. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to say thank you to those of you that have been attending all the trainings. Um, I've been looking in at the attendance and you guys are doing great. So, um, you know, kudos to you for, for taking advantage of everything that uh, the company has to offer you. So, um, I don't know. I know there were a few people on uh, Gerard's call from Freedom. Oh, Lily's on camera today. Hey, Lily. <laughs> You're never on camera. <laughs> um, so I think, uh, you know, he didn't really say anything earth shatteringly different than what we've heard. A um, couple of things that I noticed were um, one of the points that, him, uh, that Tom actually pointed out in Gerard's, um, in Gerard's yeah, session was we did 2,500 deals last year. American Homes did over 2,500 deals. While Freedom is usually the number one lender, Case is a close number two, all right? Um, so that's important for you guys to know because right now um, most buyers can't just walk into a branch, you know, their local Chase bank. Plus Chase has really uh, tightened their restrictions. So, you know, that's an important thing to note that if you had somebody who was previously pre-approved with Chase, maybe have them speak to Tim. You know, because maybe he's able to do something that Chase is no longer able to do. Um, as far as, you know, the 700 credit score, maybe if somebody that's a 650, Freedom can do FHAs with 640 and over. Am I right, Tim? That's what Gerard was saying. Yeah, that's correct. That's right. correct. And 80, 20% down over 700. Right. Okay. Which is a very small part of our overall business. Well, right. Right, exactly, especially in the areas that we do business. Now, another thing is where um, he spoke about is that the lenders tend to like to do loans, which I never knew this. We always advise our sellers, usually more down payment is better. Um, he had said that somebody who's not putting down the full 20%, that loan is insured. Um, so that might be a, a safer bet. Am I explaining that correctly, Tim? Well, yeah, so I, you know, I've mentioned this in the past to several of the agents that 20% down or 80% loan to value is the highest loan to value the bank can lend without being insured. Actually, riskier than a 15% down program, right? And you're not, and you don't get your best pricing with 20% down. You get your best pricing with 20% down on a prime business. So 20% actually again. doesn't mean anything, froze. really. 20, Tim, say that again, you froze. 25% gives you your best pricing, okay? But did I get, did you hear the part? 80% is the highest loan to value the bank can lend at without being insured. Right. So am I good? Can you hear yeah. me? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. you're frozen now. Um, so 15% down, actually less risk to the bank than 20% because they're being insured. Okay, so would it make it more likely for a bank to lend to somebody with 15% as opposed to 20%? I mean, it still depends on their overall. It, not, um, not that it would be, the pricing will be better. Okay, all right. So, you got me? Yep, I got gotcha. you. So the bottom line is, when you have somebody try to speak to Tim, because, you know, there's things that we don't know, the ins and outs. He's the professional. Where we're the professionals when it comes to pricing a house, showing a house, negotiating on the house. He's going to be the person that um, is going to help you with the financing of it. So let's make sure we're utilizing our um, our experts in the field. OK. Um, I sent another link yesterday. There's a training today. Well, that I thought looked good. Um, it's through Century 21 University, and it goes through the um, the 12 things that successful agents do. 
So might be a good refresher for my experience and successful agents, but it's also a great, um, I think it would be a great thing for any of the agents that are starting out to see what is it that successful agents actually do. So, you know, anybody who hopped on last week on John and Barbara's um, call, um, yeah. I actually spoke to him yesterday and um, oh. he is putting more listings on. They're, they're still going and it's because people are calling them and they are utilizing the, um, you know, virtual signing tools. I have to say um, our engagement with Dot Loop is up. Which thank you to you guys that are embracing it because, you know, I have agents even who, you know, went kicking and screaming. I'm not using this. I'm not going to get my seniors won't use it. And they're using it and loving it because it allows you to do business in the current climate. So um, if you have any questions, please see me and I'm happy to walk you through it, okay? Um, Doreen was able to get, uh, she's got a first accepted on a listing she put on just before this whole pandemic hit. So kudos, kudos to her, Sandy and Connie, I know are almost, they're half in contract on something. Josephine put on a new listing using total virtual um, methods. So it can be done, okay? Like I've been saying all along, there's still people that need to do business. There's still people that unfortunately, you know, can't hold the carrying costs of a loved one who died, you know, in a state sale. Um, so they need to get that sold. Or divorces, you know, people that want to move on or somebody who just, you know, already bought a house and, you know, wants to go south for the summer or north, you know. My brother-in-law keeps claiming he's moving to Maine when he retires. Some people go that way instead of uh, south. So wherever they're going, some people can't afford to carry two houses. So, um, you know, there's still business to be had. You know, we have to do it carefully, um, but it can be done. All right. Do you guys have any questions about anything? Anything for me? Um, I've just been having a little trouble with with. 21 online 21 online so i keep renew i've been renewing for business builder and i keep getting an email saying that it has to be renewed but i have the receipt like now what do you I don't know. business builder what do you mean yeah in business builder i have um where i the ones that we paid for like 25 oh that's years. the preferred client Client, that's client, yeah, client we don't level, it's not business builder. I was going to say you shouldn't have to pay for anything. Yeah, business sorry. Builder. yeah no, no, no. I've, I'm, I've been putting in people. They should have, you, you're probably going to have to pull the help desk. Unfortunately, all things Century 21, I can help you a little bit, but the majority of it is through their help desk. So, and okay, maybe no, you'll be lucky because I think Preferred Client Club is, is um, provided by a third party vendor. So you might have better results than if you call just the Century 21 help desk. So what I suggest is go into 21 online under preferred client club and see if there's a help number just for that. Okay. Right. And Thank if you, you still have problems, call me and I'll see if I can figure it out. Tim, actually, um, Wesley okay. just put a question in the chat for you. Um, okay. All right, he said, um, nobody needs to be the presenter, by the way, whoever's asking me to be presenters. Um, he said, Gerard answered his question, but I want a second opinion. Will it be more expensive to get an FHA in the current market due to the demand in the secondary market? Although rates are at an all-time low, would it would be all in the rate be more because of the current condition? I don't know exactly what that means, but although rates are at an all-time low, would be the all-in rate, all rate be more because of the current conditions? All right. So the the first question there, um, will it be more expensive to loan in the current market due to the demand in the secondary? No, I, I would say absolutely not. It would be more expensive to do an FHA loan now um rates on fha rates on fha loans right now are below three percent so the answer to that question i'm locked fha loans right now at 2.75 so the answer to that question is no 
Um, it has nothing to do with the secondary, the secondary market. You know, today's rate is the rate you can lock and it has nothing to do with anything in the secondary in the future. Does that answer, does that answer the question or? Costs? Are they holding more closing costs because there's more risk right now? There's no, there's no holding of closing costs. There's, but the risk factors, the risk, risk-based pricing adjustment have been um, on conventional loans have been rat, ratcheted up. Okay, you don't repeat that again because I know you broke up for me. I'm sorry. Is that me, like crunching like that, or what? No, we should mute it. It's Josephine. I'm mute. gonna, I'm gonna mute her. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> It's okay. No, I just I heard something. I thought it was me. So, um, the conventional loans, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they charge risk-based pricing adjustments on almost anywhere they can get you. They'll do it on loan to value, loan to value plus FICO combined, several different things. True family that FHA doesn't have risk-based pricing adjustments like that, which is why we're seeing the big disparity between the two. But the um, that's a pricing adjustment. That's not holding closing costs. Those are pricing adjustments attached to your interest rate. You can decide to pay them and get a lower rate, or you can decide to not pay them and take a little bit of a higher rate. But that typically does not apply on FHA stuff because FHA has that built in already when they're charging mortgage insurance for every type of loan. And they charge monthly mortgage insurance and upfront mortgage insurance that gets tacked on top of your base loan amount. So FHA doesn't have those pricing adjustments because they make up for it with the mortgage insurance that they charge to the borrowers. Okay, perfect. He said you answered his question, so thank you. Um, All right, good. Okay, does anybody um, have anything for me? Any questions for me and anything that you're doing that you see is working? Any positive experiences? Anything you want to share with the group? A lot more, a lot more, just a lot more social media, I think. <laughs> right. Do you guys like the stuff that's being put out to you by the marketing committee? Good job, Laura. No, you're on that. Well, it's not just me. There's a lot of other people on there. I'm not looking for a pat on the back, but I just want to make sure that I'll give you one. <laughs> I just want to make sure are you guys finding it useful and are you using it? Because I mean, the point of that is to make your life easier to keep you relevant in front of your sphere of influence so that when this whole thing, you know, opens back up again, you know, they're like, wow, you know, Agatha was really all over social media and kept me informed, you know, of everything going on. Yeah. Okay. You forgot? You, you got drunk? <laughs> Lily. Lily? <laughs> she doesn't know she's on the mic. I'm going to mute her. No idea. <laughs> I'm going to mute her. So. All right. So as long as you guys are taking advantage of it, um, you know, if you do have any comments about anything or maybe you see something that you think would be um, good to share on social media, I, you know, we're looking for ideas. So definitely um, send any ideas my way. We're working on something now that I think is fun and it'll be engaging. It's a little different from, you know, um, what we've done uh, previously, but I think it's going to be a great way to engage your social media. And I have a question. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead, Bill. Uh, Don. Um, so I I've been seeing some of the emails um, going around um, from the company. Is there any way we can get stuff that has some uh, market data, like um, you know, something showing what's the, the, the first 15 days of this month. Um, I have here that, you know, in Queens, there were uh, 84 listings, 44 contracts, 54 closings. Yeah. We're, Nassau. Actually, look, we're working on something like that. We sent the um, stats to um, Tom Murtar is the one that's putting all the um, assets together. So okay. he's just um, organizing it now, but we are working on that. We put one together in the beginning of April, like the first week of April, and haven't done anything since. The problem is, I don't know um, if you guys noticed, I had sent you guys some stats way back when, and I tried to do it again, and I gave up because with this whole conversion of one key, 
all the reports are messed up. So I can't, right. you know, like usually I would go we'll into the market everything. share and it would give me, you know, how many listings were um, were available, how many things were put into contract, and it was really easy to put it, um, to pull it. And then when I um, tried to check it to make sure it was accurate because it didn't look right to me, the numbers, um, they were off. So it takes a lot more to get the numbers. So that's the only reason for the delay is right now the numbers are very, um, are skewed because of the transition from uh, Stratus to 1K. But we are working on general, um, like we did the first week, we did Brooklyn and Queens numbers and then Nassau and Suffolk uh, numbers. So we will have that. I'll make a mention to them to uh, see if we can push that out sooner rather than later. Okay? That'll be great. No problem. Okay, because anybody else have anything? I think people are just concerned and some people have, um, you know, we are noting in their head that everything is completely put on pause and it's really not. Right, it's not. I have to say things are down and it's taking longer to get stuff done um, just because their people aren't in their normal offices and things aren't getting done the way that they were, but things are still getting done. So I think Mike told me um, in a normal month they do 250, like put 250 contracts in throughout the whole company. And in March, they did 140. So it's down, but things are still being done. Um, and you know what, now that people are getting used to doing things virtually via dot loop and, and whatnot, um, you know, I think we're gonna see an increase in that. You know, plus they're talking about, you know, relaxing social distancing. So hopefully um, that will open things up a little bit. Tim, you had something to say? Or you just, just, just a couple of things that had, just a couple of things that had jumped out at me over the last few days, and I was reading some articles this morning. Um, you know, anytime there's something like this that happens, you know, whether, you know, I'll go all the way back to the election in 2000 or after 9-11, uh, even after Hurricane Sandy, anytime there's a lot of pain in the market, there is an opportunity there, you know, and what's going on right now is, Big fear is if I get laid off, I can't, you know, and I and, and I don't have a job, which is happening to the tune of about 17 million people over the last three weeks. Um, people out there that are working, that do have jobs, um, where there's an opportunity for them. And I kind of started thinking about that, and I noticed over the past week or so, I've gotten, I've received calls from officers. Uh, fireman, a doctor, a couple of nurses also that, you know, all of a sudden are wondering where interest rates are and wondering how much my payment would be on a house this price. And uh, it kind of pushed me to start reaching my older clients in my sphere, you know, that are PBA, that what, what have you. And there's an opportunity there. Uh, so I also started going through some old, um, some old leads that I have in my system. Um, and just saying, you know, I know you were in the market about six months ago, and and I think whoever just mentioned that, uh, that like everything was shut down here, you know, we have to let these people know that that's not really the case. Things are different, um, and because a lot of the market is shut down, and real estate agents can't show, uh, can't really show uh, houses, um, that there is an opportunity there. Um, where that I think when we come out of this, that opportunity is going to be gone. Right now, we kind of have the, the Fed artificially keeping interest rates low. Uh, they pledged to buy 700 billion worth of treasuries and mortgage bonds. That money's gonna run out, you know, probably sooner rather than later. And what I think you're gonna see happen after May 15th, when they start to lift some of these restrictions is you're going to see rates pop right back where they were in that opportunity uh, could be gone. So some of these that I've had in the past three months uh, with interest rates dropping over, you know, you're talking about people are able to increase their buying power uh, to the tune of about $60,000 compared to three months ago, or have a lower payment depending upon the loan size of about $280 a month, um, just kind of where rates are now to where they've been. So there is an opportunity there, 
Um, I've been reaching out and, you know, I would suggest, you know, sales is always a contact sport. So we're trying to, like you were saying with the social media, get in contact, contact as many people as we can. Maybe there's a way to kind of target that a little bit where there is a bigger opportunity for. That's pretty much it. And the other part of it is just read an article in California, in Washington, where this whole thing kind of started. You have purchase applications up over the weeks compared mm -hmm. to the prior two weeks before that. Yeah. So you guys know that. Obviously, they're a little bit of ahead of us and we will follow. But that is the kind of thing that I think we're going to see happen over the next month or so. Right. So Kerry is asking, do we feel that this um, that sellers are willing to drop their prices in this market or is it a buyer's market? I'm not seeing that. Um, I don't know if you're seeing that. I think there's less competition for the buyers that can buy anything due to the amount of furloughs there are, but I don't see a lot of inventory coming on. And so I don't see prices dropping right now. I really don't see it. So, yeah, I, I would take the buyers. Um, if I can say, yeah. I, have, I had several, I had like, it's Helene. I had four that were going to list by now. And their theory is, oh no, I'm waiting. People yeah. are going to think that they're going to get a bargain now. That's what my sellers are telling me. And I'm trying to explain that's not really so, but I don't want to lose them. I'm not pushing them so hard. Right. Once we can yeah. get a hold of the data that shows that the pricing, that's why I was trying to get you those numbers, um, but unfortunately the system screwed me, um, to show you that the, the numbers are still, they they haven't gone down. Prices have not gone down. Um, so... And like Tim's saying, now the buyers have more buying power because the rates are lower. That's going to keep driving the prices up, I think, eventually. Um, but everything well, we're we seeing. Do have, we, I'm sorry. Everybody's all the. No, I was just going to say, but saying, we, you're going to see a sharp V, where it might, you know, things are going to go down a little mm -hmm. bit, but then shoot back up. That's what we're waiting for. Yeah. As soon as this market right. opens back up, it's going to be like a rocket taking off. Uh, excuse me, it's Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hi. Um, I thought what, what Tim, what you said uh, is kind of a, a great marketing piece, but it was kind of long. I'd love to quote you. Can you possibly give us like a concise written Oh, no quoting. No quoting? <laughs> <laughs> Experts say? There'll be no quoting, with, especially with market predictions, right? Mm -hmm. Um. It, well, look, it, it, I wanted to kind of respond to the, the buyer's market thing. Any time, I think it's a buyer's market for some, right? For a select few, a smaller piece. But I think anytime you have sellers than buyers, that becomes a buyer's market. You're breaking up versa, again. Right? If we repeat. have more. Then repeat uh, yourself. You're breaking up again. How far back do I have to go? Um, anytime you have sellers and buyers. Anytime you have more sellers than buyers, that, yeah, that's a buyer's market, right? And I think, although there is an opportunity for buyers right now, uh, I think we have less buyers, right? I mean, we have to have less buyers. Uh, so I think it's an opportunity. I don't know if I'd call it a buyer's market, but you could call it a buyer's opportunity for those that can buy. Am I no good? Am I glitching? No, you're good. You're good. Okay. I see you shaking your head, your head while I'm talking. Does that mean you disagree with me? No, <laughs> I was agreeing with you. Sorry. <laughs> you, you shake your head this way when you agree. You yes. give me the. Sorry. You're making me sound like. Um, but I think it's there's an opportunity for some. So I don't know if I'd call it a buyer's market, but I'd call it a buying opportunity. You know, for the people that are able to buy right now. Helena, answer. You know. It, to those people who are telling you that they're going to wait, are you talking about buyers or sellers? Sellers. Sellers, sellers are, are panicking because they are they think that they're going to, you know, that, that people think they're going to get a really good deal right now because we're in the middle of a pandemic. So, oh, no, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Nothing virtual yet. I'm waiting. Once this is over, then you're, you're going to put it up. And these were set appointments. Yeah. For, uh, I mean, I, I, I would just... Uh, Breaking approach off. that is the kind of herd mentality you know does she want a house on the market when everybody else is or does she want to put her house on now and see what you can do with it you know yeah yeah 
right? We, anytime we, we have it. more yeah. sellers than yeah. buyers, we have. Right. Oh, it all comes down to their motivation, you know, and I don't need to tell you this, you know this. It comes down to the seller's motivation. The people that have to sell are still going to put their houses on the market. People that want to wait, they have to realize, you know what? There's a lot of people that are thinking like you are, and then all of a sudden you're going to have a ton of competition. You know, I don't know, Josephine, you just put on the newest listing. How are you, um, how are you doing as far as inquiries on that? I had uh, two inquiries from agents. That's Amazing. it. Okay. You know, oh. I called my own buyers on it and that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which I don't think it's, it's priced badly, you know, 425 oh. and only, I think is a reasonable it, price. It's too. So just uh it's a bad time that's all but i think it'll sell quickly right yeah i do have a question yeah go ahead i got an email i'm sure everybody got it from nysar yesterday i think it was yesterday um about some kind of new disclosure form for yeah. showings did you look at that I did, um, and we talked about this a little bit at uh, last week's meeting. I know um, we got cut off, but um, right now, remember NYSAR is, um, they're giving an opinion, all right? So we go based on what Tom and Mike, the broker owners of the company want to do. They're still of the opinion, which NYSAR has said, virtual showings only, which you know we've discussed this. Until you get an accepted offer, and then at that point, I'm going to take it on a case by case basis where you're going to call me and we have our own hold harmless letter. OK, the reason why Tom and Mike don't want to put it out there for the masses is because there are people that just kind of do what they want to do. And they're like, oh, I'm just going to have everybody sign a hold harmless letter and I'm going to show five properties in a day. You know, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be face to face with people right now. It's on a case by case basis. Everything needs to be done virtually. So that's the reason why Tom and Mike did not release that. And I don't even know if I'm supposed to be telling you that, but you know me, I'm full disclosure. I tell you guys everything. So I have the company's hold harmless letter that when you get to a point where you have a serious buyer, somebody who's willing to place an offer sight unseen, contingent on a physical inspection, I will send you the hold harmless letter that needs to be signed by the seller and the buyer. We have to err on the side of caution, not just your seller's health, not just your buyer's health, your health, the other agent's health, all right? That's more important than any money anybody's going to make, right? But God forbid you bring somebody into a house and they get sick and they decide to sell the sell, sue the seller, you know, oh, well, that's the only place I could have possibly gotten it, then we're, you know, we're open to, um, you know, to risk. So that's why we're using that, you know, further down the line, not as a showing tool. Go ahead, Josephine. What about, yeah, what about other companies' listings? Like if somebody wants to see something from MLS, if you have a buyer, I'm just putting it out there. We're not supposed to be showing properties. The, 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 the guidance from NYSAR and from DOS is clear, okay? Yeah, we're not that, supposed uh, to be doing face-to-face -face showing. So you need to try to get it done virtually if possible. If it's a vacant property, you go and do the walkthrough of the property via FaceTime. Let the buyer, if they're out in their car or whatever it is, then that's fine. But you should not be, um, because, all right, so perfect example, the other day an agent called me and they said, I have this hot buyer. They want to see somebody else's listing. The, the seller wants you know, to let them in. And NYSAR, if you look at the NYSAR guidance, the, the NYSAR guidance at one point says, put the sellers and buyers in touch. Well, that's great if you're in, you know, Albany, New York, where they do buyer broker contracts. Down here, we don't do that as, as often. You're lucky if you get a buyer broker contract. So if you put a seller and a buyer together, Bad you're news. Gonna be, right? They're, they're going to cut you out. There's no, you know, there's no reason for us. So that's why I'm saying try to do everything virtually first. If they say a seller's willing to show a buyer property, you walk through the property. You go. Be involved as much as possible. Do it virtually first. Don't give anybody, right? Because what do we say? It's always, it's never a problem until it's a problem, right? So don't give anybody that ammunition. You don't want to waste your time. Go and then find out, you know, that, oh, oh well, you know, 
the, the place didn't have enough bathrooms or I didn't like where so that's all stuff you can find online. That's stuff that could have been weeded out and you didn't put yourself, your buyer, your seller at risk, right? Because the biggest problem with this whole, and I've said it a thousand times, is the people that don't show any symptoms. Those are the problem people. We could all yeah. be perfectly fine and show no symptoms and yet infect somebody. I told you guys all already, my sister got it from her husband. He's, he's a cop in the city. Half of his precinct tested positive. She was nowhere near anybody that was sick. He showed no signs. She got sick. All right. Thank God she's fine. You know, but that's how this happens. This is, it's deadly for a reason, you know, because people don't know they're sick. So we're erring on the side of caution. Does gotcha. That make sense? Okay. Did I answer the question? And, and, I, and I really think, you know, when they bring people back, what they're doing is they're not going to bring everybody back at once. Right. So upstate is going to come back first. Queens, Queens is going to be last. That's for sure. Yeah, that's a possibility. I mean, and Long Island is just yeah. bad. Yeah, it is. So yeah. We would determine a hot zone last week, right? So we have to be careful. And believe me. You guys know me. I'm going to be more conservative than most people and, you know, and err on the side of caution. Yeah. Did you guys see, I'm, I'm changing the subject. Yeah, it would. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. You're still on the subject, so go ahead. Tim, did you have something to say? <laughs> yeah. Just one of, one of those things, if you're, a, if you're a listing agent, who the hell would want to live in New York after this, right? <laughs> I know. See. A lot of listings go up over the next year. It could be a possibility. It definitely could be a possibility, but you know, hmm. you couldn't you couldn't pay me enough money to move down to Florida right now with them opening their beaches, idiots. Yeah. I'm, I'm halfway there, Lori. So, you know, what? Halfway <laughs> there. Where the spine? Wish I was there right now. Yeah, right. Jeff, what'd you have to say? Well, first, do you want to live in Connecticut where the police are spying on everybody with drones and checking their body temperature and their social distancing? It's crazy. <laughs> What's yeah. to say they're not doing that here, quite honestly? You know what? You don't know it. Hackers. But don't put hackers anything in tweets. are going to be the mm -hmm. of this country. Um, you know, we have to live our lives in safely. I was going to change the subject a little bit, but did you guys see this Facebook program loaning businesses? Um, uh, or actually giving, is granting businesses all over the over the world, small businesses. Um, and they left out Long Island, which was insane. And I put out something on Facebook showing that Long Island's per capita incidence of, of COVID-19 is considerably greater than New York City. I was just shocked. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Um, I know Brian had sent it to me the other day via yeah. email. I did not get a chance to read it, though. So um we'd have to look a little bit more into it i because i don't know all about it per se so yeah i hope it's a mistake because i mean they have to recognize long island is, is real i mean queens and nassau suffolk are really the hottest point areas i mean for this right right well you know hopefully uh I don't, I don't honestly i don't know what it's all about i didn't i didn't read it so can you tell us about it well, yeah, they have they have a program where I forget the actual number. It's you know millions of dollars that they're going to grant to small businesses. You have to have at least uh, two people in the business, and there are a bunch of other requirements. You can go on Facebook to learn more. I mean, it's a good, th it's a very good thing. I mean, I know people who I know a couple of friends who've basically gone out of business because of this, and this grant is available if you're in New York City or Westchester. You can tap into it. The shock to me was Nassau and Suffolk aren't on the list. Um, I, you know, that's about the extent of what I know about it, but you can, you can look at Facebook. There are a number of requirements, but it's free money. Yeah. So if you have so a that's friend. That's different from what the government is offering with that PPP. Um, right. Totally right? separate. Totally additional to that. Which supposedly they, they approved another like $400 billion again. Yeah, so crazy. watch oh, for that. Today. Not enough. No, I know. Well, when you see big companies like Shake Shack and Ruth Chris taking the money, as opposed to, you know, the mom. Oh, no. Shake Shack returned it. Shake Shack returned it. Shake Shack yeah, returned the money it. Back. And also, Harvard. Harvard's giving the money back as well. Harvard. Yeah. Good. They, 
that they said they had given the money back. Millions of dollars in endowments. Did they change it? Well, Harvard hear about well, today, so they right? Harvard, Harvard's agreeing. It sounds like they're agreeing. Oh, they must have caved to they peer pressure. The thing I saw this morning said they were. They got millions of dollars, so they don't need it. Well, did, billions did of you dollars see the news? Endowments, and they're a non-profit. Just heard on business news. And they're a non-profit. But getting back to Jeff with Facebook, the issue is you don't have two employees. I'm not sure. Should be a crime what they're doing. Right. Yeah, we don't have two employees. Right. Right. No, unless yeah. you're a team, you know, and I, we don't have any declared teams in our office, so it wouldn't apply to anybody right. in our office. So, right. Has that gotten the first uh, CARE Act payment? I don't think so. Based on the survey, I, I did, anything. nobody was successful. Anybody who got nope. through to regular was unemployment inclined. was rejected and told to do the PUA. So, but nobody's actually gotten a payment yet, from what I know. Yeah, we're probably going to be the last. The well, only other thing, actually, there was time. one agent that did, but his full-time job is as a waiter. So he probably got it as a result of that, not as a okay. result of being a realtor. Yeah. So. All right. Um, so do you guys have anything else? Anything you want me to concentrate on for next week? I mean, this is just more... You know, get out there, try to keep doing, you know, what you can do. I'm sorry? Let's just all try to share. You know, my thing is we all should share. If you see like a webinar or something that looks good, let's all share it. Right, so, right. Well, I want to hop off soon because that, that one at 12 o'clock, I told yeah, you about that one's starting. 21 yeah. University. Also, there's this lady, it's a four minute video, Joe Mangum, she's on, it's through the Century 21 University uh, group and workplace. So it's a four minute video on struggling to stay focused, which I know this has been, you know, this week's a little better, last week I had a bad week last week. So, you know, some days are better than others, you know, but it gets to everybody. Yeah. So, um, you know, just yeah. try to do what you can do and, uh, Try to stay positive. That's it. That's all we can do. So and she, I miss um, the office. I miss being with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So it's funny. I said uh, the things we're not going to complain about after this, right? I said I'll never right. complain about being on a cold baseball field. <laughs> I claim I claim oh, that yep. that invented social distancing back in the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We waited a long time. Yeah, Tim, I feel so bad for your son. He's a new year and he doesn't get to play his last season, huh? Yeah, you know, I don't, I think he, I think he didn't, I think he wasn't getting his hopes up. So me and a couple of the other dads, we were all getting our hopes up thinking we could force the issue and, you know, yeah, it didn't happen. So the, yeah. I think the kids aren't as upset as the dads, just so you know. Right, right. Yeah. I think that's with everything. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Exactly. My son, my other son, on the other hand, is very excited that all his regents are canceled and his fourth quarter grades are going to be passed now. So <laughs> he has officially phoned it in. <laughs> so the younger kids don't care. The older one. Anyway. So, all right, guys. Um, if you have anything for me, please don't hesitate to call me. I am here. I've been answering my phone up till nine o'clock, which is that's a record for me. <laughs> Usually I'm in bed by nine, but I just kind of lose track of time and I've been answering my phone all, all hours of the night lately. So feel free to call me. All right. And keep up the good work. Right. I know you guys are trying. All right. Take care. All right, all right guys. Stay healthy. All right, guys. Stay safe. Bye. 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 Bye.